see. I got something for you. What do we got here? What do we got here, girl? Hmm? Yeah, is that a is that an easy one to open? How do I get in here? No, nope, right here. Oh man. This is a big old box, Gypsy. Hey, I'm gonna need your help. I don't think I can open up I don't think I can open this all up on my own. Can you help me? Can you help me a little? Huh? Can you help me a little? Alright. Okay. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think, huh? That's an awful big box. How am I gonna get in? How am I gonna get in? How am I gonna get in there, huh? How am I gonna get in there? I'm gonna have to figure it out. Stapled up really good. Come here. What do we do? What do we do? Hey. All right. I'll get the scissors. I'll do it myself. What's a Celestron? What's a Celestron, huh? Come on. Get up Help me out. Inspector, it's a box within a box. What is this? What is this craziness? What in the world? Are you kidding me? It's a box within a box. All right. Are we going to open it up this way or are we going to take it out? I think we should open it up this way. Hey, over here. Help me out. Sit. You know if I'm doing anything wrong here. You know if I'm doing anything wrong. All right. Looks like it comes with a hand control guide, CD, special edition project product registration. Nice big thick book that I have to memorize. Yeah. Oh, now there's more boxes within boxes. Here we go. Now we're talking. This is up your alley, baby. This is so gypsy. He's a gypsy. One. Two. What it comes in, and that ain't wrong. It's heavy. All right. I need some help now here. What's in that one? Open it up. What's in there? Hmm? What's in there? Hmm? What's in there?
good. in there? Anything else in there? Don't miss nothing. Don't miss nothing. No? Oh, we got some bubble wrap. Oh, that's relaxing. Well, what do you got? There's nothing there. It's empty. Hey, hey, I got it right here. Uh-huh. Hey, look, I got it. <laughs> you didn't get it. I got it. All you got was a stinking box. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll call this the smallest of the three larger boxes. Nice padding. Nice form. So this is the articulated arm and base. That's cool because it'll be able to be transported in that once you get yourself a nice case or just take the box up and use that. No, I don't need that open. Uh-uh. So here we go with that. This don't look so bad, does it? You gonna figure this out fast? Are you almost done over there? Mm -hmm. a piece. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Huh? Where'd it go? Huh? I guess we'll find it later. All right. Let's go ahead and unwrap this. Pretty hefty little unit. It's got some heft to it. Definitely not a goofy piece of equipment in any way, shape, or form. Save that silica gel too. Don't throw that out because that's good for a while. You just keep it in the box with that. Okay. And from what I've read, this part slides into that, and it's pretty darn easy to get it all together. There's our storage for the telescope base. These are the parts for the eye finder. I think Gypsy swallowed one of them, I don't know. I can't find it. She'll poop it out later. What you doing? Hmm? Is that it? Is that it? Huh? Is this it? tripod. I think it's packaged a little more conservatively. I don't think that's something I'll probably use too many times before it falls apart. But you got some pretty decent styrofoam in there. Definitely not the quality of the other ones over here that will be mandatory to keep. 
seems like a pretty hefty tripod too. It's not like some spindly little thing you might use to make videos for YouTube. I don't know what that would be all about. Oh, what are you doing now, huh? Huh? So this is pretty cool. Yeah. Nice and sturdy. It has stops where the legs go out. Alright, good deal. So apparently, these come out. Doesn't seem like they lock. Seems like you gotta tighten that just to get them to lock, so it's not like a easy up tent leg or anything. They're a little tight towards the end there. Flip this around. Boom. All right. Looks like the bolts that bolt the base to the tripod are captured so you can't drop them in the grass. That's a pretty good design. There's a piece that's supposed to go on down here and that will hold the legs apart so that they're more stable. And this would be that. They call it an accessory tray. Sort of a combination accessory tray, tripod, brace. I would imagine once you get this thing all together, if you got room and somewhere to do it, you could probably just carry it in and out of the house all put together. You don't have to take this all apart every time you use it. Let's see how this works. Kind of a neat design, keeps everything underneath and neat. Gives you a place to hang your cords or clamp stuff that you might want to have in there. So, get these three aligned here. from wobbling. Nice. Make sure all these are fully extended. Right on. All right. Yeah, all right. Seems pretty sturdy. Oh, it comes with a really nice wrench. Whew, I could probably put that on eBay for, what, about a dollar? I'll keep it. It's shiny. Really shiny things around here. All right, so they got some important notes here. That's good. Yep. First thing it tells you to save your box and foam. So that's pretty good. And it tells you to unpack carefully, not to let your labradoodle tear it to pieces, but too late for that. Sorry, Amazon. So, what do we got here? Like this guy is taped and hooked in there. So, looks to me like it can go pretty much anyway. Doesn't have to have some special direction. There don't seem to be any locating pins, so I'm just gonna drop it on there. I have all these little reveals. Stick the bolt in the hole. Hey, watch it. Idea is not to tighten them up until they're all fully in. Boom. Nice solid setup. I guess the tape's just for shipping. I don't think this thing's gonna fall out or go falling anywhere. So that's a pretty nice setup there. It's nice and flush. You can't walk into it or bump it real easy while you're using it. So let's see what we got here. Well, there's a warning. Already got a warning. It says, do not look at the sun with your telescope. Never attempt to view the sun through any telescope without proper filtering. 
All right, and then it's in four other languages, so depending on where you're from, you probably won't burn your eyes out. If you speak an obscure language, though, sorry, all bits are off. So this looks a little ratty, but that's just a sticker that covers that and protects it. So, looks like this is the locking device. So there's no other pieces that I have to find to actually attach this. So let's go ahead and attach this thing. Let me turn this so you guys can see the track as it goes in. window. So down here you have an auxiliary and an auto guide, which I would imagine that is controls that tie into this with some sort of what looks like a, uh, a cable, like possibly a Ethernet cable or something or a phone cable. Do not look into the sun. Size this thing up here before I just lift it up. No scratches. Damage. It's a nice big heavy cap on the end, not some flimsy piece of crap like some cameras come with. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I think it's gonna work. So we're gonna come over here. We'll slide that bad boy down just like this, I think. Let's see. Ooh, maybe not. Check it before you let go. Kind of tug on it, lift it, tug it, twist it before you let it go. Looks <clears throat> like it clears by about a quarter inch there. I'm sure that's intentional. So basically, I need to hook some power to this thing and see if it works. star diagonal. This is going to be the eyepiece. This is where you attach your filters and stuff too. For your Barlow lens. Okay. You got a cap that goes in side and this one kind of just goes over on this side two set screws so that when you get this thing on there it is going to stay over here this is the eyepiece that it comes with. This would appear to be a fully coated China 25 millimeter plus hole. I guess that's the word. But it's similar to the lenses that I got in that kit that I did a previous video on. I'll put the link right there so you guys can go back and watch that before we get too far. So it would appear that the only thing left to do is to get this ranging scope out. And this goes on the side and basically this is the laser that you use to locate what you're looking at and then because it's fastened to the side of the telescope whatever you see in this the telescope's almost certain to find it and it'll be real close. So a lot of guys buy real fancy versions of this but that's not real necessary from what I've read. It's just kind of a geeky thing that some people like to do. Let's see how that goes on there. I don't think that's screws that 
catch it or screws that slide along it. I guess I should be wearing glasses, huh? What do you guys think? Probably be a good idea, right? slide onto that little guy right in the exact right spot just like that bada bing bada boom that's it then you use these knobs this one turns the laser on and off you put batteries in this by the way and then this one and this one adjust the angle of the eye side sideways or up and down and then apparently there's a battery here that you pull that out, boom. And you can't have a laser without a level. So I reckon this goes somewhere to tell you if it's level. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Got a little double stick tape on that. I like that. You can stick it wherever you want, really. No, just, you know, generally speaking. All right. So this is the Starbright XLT. Celestron Next Star 8 SE. Let's go ahead and take a little zoom in on this thing. Here's the tripod, accessory tray, control panel. This is pretty cool. Actually hooks on the back there. Just kind of slide it in there and it stays in there nice and solid. Here's your cap. This guy comes off to expose the lens, which we'll be doing when I get the power on this thing. We fire it up. There's your laser side scope. You look right through there when it's on. Turn it on with this switch right here. Adjust it side to side with this button. Adjust it up and down with that one. And here's the knob on the side where you can actually take the telescope off of the mount. And these are nice sturdy stainless steel legs. The wing nuts on these, they're not too bad. They could have probably done something a little nicer because those are probably going to crack over time. And it looks like the feet are pretty sturdy. Kind of a hard plastic with a spike on the end. So I would imagine when it's outside, it'll actually stick in the ground and stay real nice. Not move too much. The accessory tray, you can hide, hide all your extra lenses and stuff in there too. That's kind of cool. Gypsy, I got a box. Can you help me? I need that open. what it is yet. Come on. Get out of there. Yeah, there you go. Good 
job. All right? Yeah. What do you got? What is it? What is that? Huh? What is that? What is that? Huh? Can everybody see? Huh? Do you want to see? You gonna let me see? What's this? this? There's a box. Okay. There's something else in there? What is it? What is it? I can't get that out of there. I need to open it up better than that. Yeah. I'm gonna get you some help. go. Oh, I see it now. Good. 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 Good girl. I'm almost in it. Can't put it together without all the work, baby. Let's do it. What is it? What did you get? Just for everyone who says that good girls should get treats, good girls get treats. Thank you, honey. Well done. All right. Let's see. Okay, we got a solar filter. This will enable me to break the rules and look at the sun, unlike the directions say. And it's supposedly fairly flimsy, people tell me, so I'm going to just kind of take it out, show you guys, and then put it back in this thing and set it aside. Okay. Now, I'm going to start taking pictures right off the bat with an iPhone 8 Plus. So for almost nothing, I got this little guy. It's a smartphone adapter. It actually will attach my iPhone 8 to the telescope. Looks like a pretty nice piece of equipment when I saw it on Amazon, so it looks like you probably would get your money's worth. Again, it comes with a really nice thick foam type of material here. And that's great. That's something for the car. Now what's this? Okay, this is the AC adapter. This is what I need to power it up. That's why it hasn't moved since you saw it get set up. Because we got no power to it yet. So, take all this stuff out. And get rid of the packaging. Amazon person, you know I never throw that out. Woo. All right. So this is the phone adapter. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's supposed to be pretty sturdy. It goes one way so that the camera's offset. The one in the center it might end up seeing that. So. You got a little adjustment back here. You can adjust it up and down. Pretty cool. An adjustment here where you can adjust it side to side. And different clamping tensions. If it's something smaller, something bigger, you can clamp it on there. Yeah, it looks like a pretty rugged instrument. I think we'll do okay with that. I definitely think we'll be doing okay with that. And this is forward. And backward. 
like so. Up and down. This one is side to side. You got two knobs here. So that's a pretty cool little guy right there. If y'all are ever gonna think about buying one of these, just from the initial opening up and looking at it, it looks like it's a pretty good deal for like 20 something bucks. You can't even buy a crappy car mount for 20 something bucks anymore. Looks like a couple of knobs here of some kind to maybe help it mount somewhere or mount around something or some kind of locking ring. I'm not sure what those are, but I'll go through the instructions and first time we use it, I'll explain to you exactly what it is once I find out. And then we got some adapters here for, hey, if any of you guys are in uh, the UK, I don't know what that is, but it kind of looks like some sort of uh, power adapter for 240 maybe. There we go, there's a plug adapter. There's even one for a, I guess that would be a 25 or a 30 amp. I don't know what the heck that is. Hmm, interesting. Maybe different adapters for different telescopes. This one just has a plug in the side, a little round male plug. Over here is where it plugs in, I believe. Nope, that's not it. Probably in the base somewhere. Right here. Boom. Looks like it goes right in either there or there. Right there. It's funny, you get stuff from China and they're always twisted backwards. I don't know what that's all about. Kind of strange. So, you gotta grab one of these guys, and this turns your adapter into 110, 240, whatever place you're from in the world. I'm in 110, so 110 it is. power switch right there turn it on it lights up real nice so let's tilt this up a little I reckon we should get us some instructions all right so we got her powered up I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy together my little storage bin down here to hold stuff temporarily. This is the prism. This is going to slide up into there. There are two set screws. And you just kind of slide it up in there and get that aligned to where it's comfortable for you. And you open this one up. And that's where your eyepiece goes. Piece is down here in the holding bin. You kind of put it through the hole and then you slide that back from underneath down there and it locks it in. Okay. It looks as if you want to back these screws out all the way until they're flush with the inside of that tube. And you want to put that in there. I think you can just a light tightening. I wouldn't tighten on these too much. You're probably not going to get a whole lot of time out of them. You want to kind of keep it. Keep it nice and light. And there's our lens to look into. We've got our aiming point. Okay, now with the controller, <coughs> you can use these buttons here to run it up and down, or right to left. That's if you know where your stuff is that you're looking for and you just use that and it'll actually line up. 
there's a lot of other ways to program it and to get it to identify things and to, uh, you know, adjust to your liking. Um, there's an alignment button. You hit that and you use sky align and that actually finds wherever you are using three different objects in the sky, which is typically going to be like Venus, Mars, and the moon or something like that. But that's pretty cool. And then it can actually, after you sky align, it can actually find other things that it's going to find out where they are because once you tell it where it is, it'll know exactly where to look. So that's pretty much the setup. That's how it goes. I'm going to do another video on the operation of it. I'm going to get it plugged in, do a little practice, take it outside. And uh, the next video you see is going to be us setting it up outside, using it, aligning it, and uh, making sure that it works and focuses and that I can see whatever I'm looking at without too much trouble. And I'm going to definitely be interested to see how this finder works on it because if it doesn't work real well and I find it's kind of clunky, then I'll, I'll go online and I'll buy another one for 50 or 60 bucks like some of these guys are doing that's, you know, three or four times more powerful. But uh, we'll see how it works. So thanks for watching this. This has basically been uh, just the unboxing and the initial setup of the Celestron 8 SE. Um, I'm Dave from Angstrom Management, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun together, guys, because uh, we're going we're gonna to look at some really cool stuff, and uh, we're going to share it. So uh, I want to thanks, uh, give thanks to Josh for uh, collaborating with me from Ancient Amnesia. He's a, a friend of mine. We're partners uh, doing podcasts, so uh, we'll be doing some live stuff and all when we're using this telescope and discussing what we see and, you know, kind of touching on the, the importance of space and, you know, how it is really the next frontier. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.